Hey guys, Brady here. And I just saw Transformers The Last Night. So, pretty much this movie is about... the takes place during like King Arthur time, the like medieval times, they opens up in medieval times, with like the story of King Arthur and how, I guess, Merlin found a robot. Uh, one, I think it was like a Decepticon or something, and yeah, and then it cuts to, and it cuts to like two conspiracies about World War One and World War Two and stuff like that, and um, yeah, so Cade Yeager's back, you know Mark Wahlberg's character, but uh, his daughter isn't back, and I was sorry I'm whispering. It's just that it's late at night and my parents are sleeping, um, but they uh. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, my biggest issue within the trailer is, like, where, where's Tessa? Why isn't Tessa in this movie? And they, and they explained in this movie that she's in college. Now I have closure on where she is. I I was like, oh, my God. They're, they're probably not going to explain anything without having to Tessa. Like, like, and then it's just said, like, one line dog. She's in college. I was like, right, good. She's in college. I now have closure and my life could go on <laughs> with this uh, franchise. Uh, so yeah, um, so now he gets like this new kind of daughter figure played by Isabella Moner or whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, some Disney Channel star or Nickelodeon, some, I don't know. Uh, she's 15 years old, 15 or 16 years old and Michael Bay is trying to make her look uh, hot, I guess which is kind of odd because some people that like this movie are my age, 19 years old, and we don't want to see uh, a 15-year-old running around with short shorts and a tank top for two and a half hours. That's just, no, that's just just a whole lot. And luckily, there's another uh, girl in this movie who is maybe in her 20s who's nice to look at. But, wow. I mean, Bay did all right with uh, Nicola Peltz because in 2014, Nicola Peltz was actually 19 years old, going to be 20 next, uh, uh, the following year. So that was fine. She was 19. Uh, when Transformers came out, uh, what's her face? Megan Fox was 20 years old when that movie came out, and then she was 22 when uh, Revenge of the Fallen came out. And same thing with uh, what's her face? Uh, Rosie Hunting and Whiteley, she was 30 uh, when Transformers 3 came out. So they've all had like 20, 30, 19, they're now 15. That's just decreasing in age and it's just weird but uh anyway um it just felt uncomfortable when they uh when they showed whenever they like showed her and it was like no uh anyway so yeah she pretty much plays the pretty much an or she's an orphan but she doesn't want to call herself an orphan uh but um I didn't say is she, she like lives in like this junkyard uh along with Cade and Kate Yeager and uh this other guy whom I forgot his, his name um and uh yeah I did not like this movie at all like I love the Transformers franchise like I I just rewatched the first four movies in preparation for this movie and let me just rank them right now. One, three, four, five, two. Um, so yeah, this is the worst Transformers movie since Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Um, towards the end of the movie, there's like two big action scenes in the in the, in the last 20 minutes. And uh, it felt like an hour watching that watching those two scenes just felt like an hour longer than it should have been um i my friend and i just got up in the middle of that scene and just were like all right we're gonna watch the rest of the movie from the stairs because we i we just gave up 
we honestly gave up on the movie. I've never done that tra- tra- Transformers movie, let alone a, uh, or Michael Bay movie, let alone a Transformers movie. Uh, granted, I haven't seen too many of Michael Bay's movies in theaters. I've only seen Transformers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 13 Hours, and Pain and Gain. So yeah, I've, I've been there, I've been seeing these movies for 10 years, I guess. But, um, yeah. Where did I begin? Yeah. The, the Transformers in this movie, they, I don't know why, they came off as annoying in the beginning. Like, they were just unbear, unbearable in the beginning of this movie. Like, like when when we get to see Bumblebee and all the other characters back again, they just came off as annoying. Like, they had, like, those really annoying type sequel moments. You know how sequels always have, like, those moments where the characters do, like, these do, like these weird things? Um... Uh, the, I don't know. It, the Bumblebee had like this weird moment where there's a song playing in, in his uh in his car and he just he just started dancing like this or something like that and I was like N- no something and then you could tell from the beginning of this movie that something was off like they let it, like, granted they didn't do it in the fourth movie but uh. The first three Transformers movies that always you, whenever they reveal the title, you always hear like the like the shifting and stuff like that, and then you see like the Transformers logo in it, and then like little tiny letters that says like Dark of the Moon or Revenge of the Fallen. Um, but for this movie, it just says in very little tiny text, just in the middle of the screen, Transformers of Last Night. I was like, wow, that's odd. It's not like covering up the entire screen like. Like the first three movies, it's just very tiny uh, on the screen. Um, almost like it's trying to be an independent movie. But, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm just really disappointed with this movie because I really wanted to like this movie. Um, I, I wasn't expecting, like, anything like... Um, I wasn't expecting like Edge of Tomorrow, like something great at like Edge of Tomorrow or uh, or um, Kong Skull Island or anything like one of those big fun action movies. I wanted this to be a fun action movie, but it it kind of left you not caring for the last half of the movie. Like the last half of the movie, I just kind of gave up on the story. Um, so I'm gonna give Transformers last night. Two stars out of five. Uh, there are some really good things in this movie, but there's also really bad things in this movie. Um, I th- like I thought some of the action scenes were pretty cool. I, like I love the action scenes in this movie. I think they're shot really well. Uh, they're over long. The last two felt over longed, but they are still kind of fun to watch. Other than that, it was just kind of eh. Um, so, I guess this is another weekend where Wonder Woman would will rise in the box office. Uh, it's going to continue rising for the next two weeks until Spider-Man Homecoming comes out. So, I'm going to get, yeah, so yeah, two stars out of five. Uh, sorry if I sound monotone, I'm just whispering, I don't want to wake up my parents. Good night.